Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out the last game of 2014. This is Certainty Condition by developer VFS Game Design. That's Vancouver Film School. This is a student-made first-person puzzle game with a little bit of like a pseudo-scientific or quasi-philosophical uh, bent to it. We're going to be exploring ideas and themes to do with certainty and omnipotence and all sorts of other things like that. It's a very difficult one to wrap up into a synopsis, I must say. Having only played about five minutes of it as well. Well, it's got some good voice acting and some interesting presentation, so I guess we'll let it stand at that point and we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, so our title screen, as you can see, is actually a little bit different from normal because we're actually not going to be selecting things with a pointer. Uh, we're actually going to be using our 360 gamepad to pick where we go, and behind us there's actually the credits, which is kind of nice to see. Uh, as the world sort of fades out into stardust, as it often tends to, or at least Carl Sagan would say so. Uh, we're going to end up just picking this door, and it's going to roll a little bit of a uh, intro, so I'm going to be quiet for that moment, and then we'll pick up after that for the title screen, or the, uh, the proper, you know, uh, capping of the title screen. So let's uh, jump in. The positivists were onto something you know. Cora, I can't let you use this. The world is composed entirely of knowable laws. Put that down, Horace. You don't know what it's capable of. But anything that is known can be changed. Neither do you, which is why you have to stop. If omniscience is achievable, omnipotence becomes inevitable. What are you? Lawrence, don't! <laughs> then again, perhaps nothing is certain. Already introduced a bit of a conundrum in just that short little statement. I thought that was pretty good, actually, for an intro. Hopefully you guys noticed the pictures talking with the lights. The atomizer's ability to transport and manipulate matter is unparalleled. Alright, so this is the first room we're introduced to. As you can see, things look fairly benign here, but this is just our tutorialization area. Uh, so objects that vibrate... Uh, when looked at, can be atomized and carried by pulling right trigger. They can be dropped by pulling left trigger. So we're going to grab this book. As you can see, it atomizes, appears in my hands, and then we'll take it over here. Now the blackboard seems to be wiped off, and behind us, we've got a door to the next area. The largest of objects can be made to fit in your pocket, or vice versa. So some objects need to be scaled up or down with left or right bumpers before they will slot properly. In this case, a door. We will uh, try and scale it to fit this door frame. So right bumper makes it smaller, left bumper makes it larger. Reorientation of objects is effortless. Objects can be rotated by using the face buttons. As you can tell, we've got a cube here with a line on it, so we're going to grab that and bring it over here where clearly we can see we've got a uh, larger cube with a line on it so we're going to try and orient that with the face buttons like it suggested and flip it and we're good its ability to affect the age of atoms is somewhat less stable unfortunately so the box seems to be dissolving and the whole world around us oh my god there's a clock there i didn't even notice that the first time uh, so a new room has been revealed don't know what to do next. Look for a chalkboard. They change over when you are stuck. Okay, good to know. There's also a scrap down on the floor here. Let's pick that up as well. Uh, if we can. There we go. There's a point at which every possible outcome of an event can be known. Not in theory. Not in a controlled experiment. But in actuality. I call it the certainty condition. So, the certainty condition, I guess, is just another word for omniscience. It's one of those things where, like, I want to kind of delve into the meaning of that concept, but at the same time, it's so big and nebulous, I don't think any positive anything would come of it. It's just sort of one of those, you know, philosophical exercises in masturbation. It doesn't really get you anywhere. It's just, it's just a circle. <laughs> so let's go through the door, and we'll see where the next area takes us. All right, now this is where things start to get a bit more interesting. We're presented with this gallery space, as well as this little model diorama mock-up thing with, obviously, this 
as an interactable piece. We've also got a chalkboard over here. Not really saying much. We've got... It's like a... I don't know, like a little pedestal with a line across it. We've got a doorway with a bunch of lines leading into it. Uh, we've got a cylinder with a chunk missing. Some stuff knocked on the floor. And I guess that's... Oh, and then there's also this sphere with a chunk missing in the center here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, let it reorganize. It was a thought, Lawrence, but if I didn't want to decorate our gallery, I won't enjoy decorating a model of it. And then we're going to pop it down like... Oop, I just picked it up a second time. That's my fault. Just pop it down like that. Please let go. Oh, it's already down. Okay, for some reason it clicked into space way faster than I expected. Uh, so my only criticism so far to this is I really think, and this is just maybe one of those personal things that I take uh, because I'm a YouTuber and because I deal with this stuff all the time, I really, really wish that whenever there's spoken dialogue that it would have subtitles or at least an option for them. Um, I understand it's a student-made game, so like sometimes things don't always happen that maybe they intended to. Uh, but that's one case where, like, I really think that does make a difference, and I think it's just a lot more cin cinematic and professional when you have that option uh, to be able to see what's being said. And as well as when I'm speaking over it in case, you know, the accent's too much or you just aren't paying attention, the ability to read it along is actually pretty significant. Uh, so we picked up a sort of a hammer here, and we're just going to smash this, and we can get out this chunk of uh, triangle that we're going to take back with us. Oh yeah, I can also interact with this pillow for some reason. Flip that over. Does that do anything? No, it's just pillow on both sides. Just intersect that with that wall there. And I don't think this book really does anything either. So maybe these are just red herrings to mislead us. Oh, we're really after... Oh, wow. Great balancing. Really after is this bit right here. So we're going to take this back to the other room. And we're going to pop it right into the top. We're just going to have to rotate it a little bit to or uh, orient it so it fits with this line. And you'll tell that actually will turn, act as a key mechanism. And then it'll cause a little light to go through the, uh, to this door, which is clearly our next objective. You can see it's even slightly ajar, too, or maybe it's just... I don't know, is it intentionally ajar? Yeah, it probably is. I was going to say maybe it was just a mistake of the way it was positioned. I've grabbed another note. What's going on? It feels as if weeks have passed, yet I grow neither tired nor hungry. The mansion has twisted on itself in strange ways. Doors and rooms where there were none before. Furniture and equipment we never owned, but that I recognize instantly as our own. I have to find Cora. She can fix this, can't she? So each one of those notes seems to act sort of like a missing page from Mist or something like that. Uh, can we? Just to, oh, there's no door now. I freaking rotated it the wrong way. Ooh. All right, you know what? That'll work, too. I didn't actually mean to do that, but that'll work. So as you can tell, we're in charge of how this uh, orientation of this room goes, and this is sort of an extension of how the game works as a whole. There's other parts that sort of fall into the same uh, trappings as that. Also, why can't I... Okay, I guess this glass is just right in the wrong spot. It's too bad we can't jump. Otherwise, this puzzle would be made a lot easier. So we got a little bit of a rat maze to wander through here. Nothing I think we can't solve after a moment. Uh, having there be glass as the active walls does make it substantially harder to find where you're going, uh, considering it's a little tricky to even see what's in your way and what's not. I think we'll have taken all of the wrong passages before we find our way to the correct one, which leads us here. And then the uh, re-atomizing of that little wheel of blue cheese uh, allows us access out. Now, oh, you know what? I went the wrong way. I want to go this way. Where there's actually space. Now, if that glass hadn't have shattered, I wouldn't have been able to get through there. So, hopefully that's fairly obvious, though. I love this ceiling, too, that they actually took the time to model that. Could have been so easy to just take this and just drop in a texture that has that same sort of lattice work to it. Alright, so now we've got to orient the, uh, the sphere with the cheese block. And something like that should do it. Nothing too complex. So that's two out of three. We've got one more space, as you can see, on our model. I can actually see the image of the shape we need to grab, uh, which definitely makes it a little easier. Oh, and as I grabbed it, it actually rotated a little bit, so that makes things even extra easier. 
Now, the puzzles so far are super simple. Like, this isn't anything uh, to be worried about, but it does get a little bit more complex later on. So we've got a phonograph over here, and I guess we another note we're going to read out. This was unexpected. Lawrence has managed to, how to put this, fragment time around us. I've seen countless possibilities represented. Experiments I haven't yet pursued appear before me. Or the mansion in shambles as if abandoned for decades. Quite fascinating. Alright, so we get a record. Pop it down on here. Oh, I might have to scale it. Is that... What place? Is this not what I do? Like, the most obvious thing in the world. Oh, I think it did place for a second, actually. I saw it vibrating. I have to be just dead on with the placement? It looks too big, though. But when I shrink it, now it's too small. Oh, maybe I have to turn it over? Didn't I have it on there? Oh. Oh. Well, I put it down anyway. I guess maybe that's not what I'm supposed to do. You know, I walked into this room last time, and I wonder if it was bugged, because uh, I don't think I had to do anything. The object was just kind of sitting on the ground. I just walked away with it. So maybe I missed out on a puzzle that was intended to be here that I, I just didn't get the opportunity to solve. Pretty sure that's what we're supposed to do. I don't see a lot of other things I can really interact with. I like this little mini piano down there. That's kind of cute, too. I've noticed there's a little bit of, like, unresponsiveness with the 360 controller, and, I mean, you can technically use... I think WASD does work, but it doesn't hold the mouse in place. Oh, it's in here. It's just sitting in the picture. Oh, well, that was awfully easy, actually. I'm a dummy. Probably looked right at it and just walked right by. Uh, but, yeah, there's a little bit of a lag every now and then when it comes to the input, and I don't know if that's just because of me, or if it's some kind of inter, uh, or incompatibility or something like that, but it's a little bit frustrating when you go to move the analog stick and it doesn't quite respond right away. Alright, so we've made the cylinder, we've now opened all three passages, and this is going to give us the next area. Now things feel a little bit more menacing. And also a little bit more confusing as well, because we had a pretty clear objective in the last area. Uh, but now we're going to have to really get to, you know, looking around and really trying to figure out what's going on here. That is really pretty. I love how the light changes, and then we can just go left and right and watch the, the moon and the sun come up. So what we've got here seems to be two of the same room where time is splintered. And it's uh, a destroyed version of the room on one side and a cleaned up version on the other side. As you can see, there's like that hole in the uh, walkway up above. It's kind of tricky to see here because of the projections, maybe kind of low res. Uh, but you can see the snow coming down through it. And we've also got a vibrating box here. But you can see, I mean, that is not the case in this side. Things are all fine. Uh, so we've got to try and, I guess, sync up these two spaces so they actually make sense between them. Actually, take this whole painting right off the wall. Apparently, we just had it commissioned, and the paint is already peeling off. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, can we scale this up? Does that do anything? I actually, honestly, don't know how to solve these puzzles yet. I have only done a little bit of this stuff in this space, so I'm probably going to end the episode around here. Uh oh, part of the painting. Oh, okay. It vanishes and then comes back. Hey, I was using that. Now, what if I walk back with that all broken on it? Will it rematerialize, or is it just broken permanently now? I think it's just broken permanently. Man, I knocked the the design right off that painting. Can I put it back on the wall now? Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Obviously, I'm going to have to check out all the bookcases and everything. Now it doesn't look like it. I'll just lean it up against the wall over here and see if maybe I can pick this up. Yep. All right, grab the ring. Please? Can I? Oh. Uh, for some reason it doesn't like that, and the frame rate dropped, and also... Oh, okay. I can't get a good viewing angle sometimes, because you can only lean down about at a 45 degree angle. You can look up way more than you can look down. Not really sure why. 
Can I put that over here? Is this where this belongs? Maybe scale it up? Is this the outer edge? No? Alright. Seems to belong on some part of this. Uh, obviously, it's probably color-coded, so being on that side doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, it's got dynamic shadows for this object. That's nice. Probably fits on here somehow. Maybe? Oh, yeah, actually, I see a space for it right there. Just gonna have to rotate it a couple of times and scale it back down. Uh, there we go. All right, so we've added a blue nugget to that part of the painting. I'm guessing if I fill up this one, the other side of the world will relax and fix itself. But you know what? I'm going to leave that to you guys. I think that's about all I really want to do for Certainty Condition. Very cool game. I'm definitely looking forward to solving the rest of this. I'm not sure how long it is, but, you know, what's the harm? Game's free. Uh, you should definitely go check it out. I think it's quite enjoyable. I think it's a, an interesting experience. Uh, the presentation is very well done. Uh, you know, minor little gripes, but nothing too serious, honestly. This is really quite well done in, in general. So let me know what you think about it in the comments if you don't mind. I do appreciate uh, any feedback on this, any opinions you might have about your experiences, or if you've solved it, let me know how long this is roughly. I would be curious to know, and for other people in the comments own information, that would be kind of nice to know that as well. And uh, if you're wishing that I would solve this puzzle, like, yeah, I, I know some of these pieces are interactable, and I was just kind of walking right by them. So I have plenty of leads. I'm just choosing not to pursue them for the sake of spoilers, because, like, if this game ends up being super short, I don't want to show the whole thing necessarily. I want to leave something to the imagination and to let you guys go ahead and grab it. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching. It's been a wild year. Thank you for all of your support for 2014 and, of course, the years prior, but, you know, since it's New Year's night or New Year's Eve, rather... Uh, I definitely want to thank you for all your support for this year. Hope you'll stick around with me for who knows how much longer, uh, but at the very least, we're going to hit the thousand episodes mark real soon. So thank you again. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.